Like many of you, I'm sure, at the time when I applied for a scholarship, I didn't have a spare 17 grand lying around in the bank to fund the bar training course. So for me, it was really make or break for my legal career to secure that scholarship. And I applied twice. The first time, I ate a rejection, and a year later, I applied again, and I was successful. And in today's video, we're going to talk about exactly what I changed to flip the odds in my favor. Guys, it's nice to have you back on the channel. If you're new here, my name's Taz and I recently completed the bar training course in Manchester on my journey to qualifying as a barrister in England and Wales. Now, I've set this channel up to support aspiring solicitors and barristers, but also to share my own interests outside of law, which mainly focus on exploring the nature of our minds through supplements, materials and practices, all of which can contribute to optimizing our daily lifestyle. Pre-warning on this one, there's a lot of information to get through, so bear with me. Feel free to go at your own pace. You can pause the video as we go along, take some notes down, and yeah, just make sure you check out the description below because I've included all the links for the things that I'm gonna to refer to. But in particular, there's a great table on the Chambers and Students website which compares all four ends alongside each other, and it's really worth a look. We're gonna go through this as logically as I can, so let's start right at the beginning. What are the ends of courts? There's four of them. There's Gray's Inn, Middle Temple, Inner Temple, and Lincoln's Inn. And basically, you can't start the bar training course without being a member of one of them. Now, traditionally, the inns were the main source of education for young barristers. Obviously, as time's gone on, chambers have more or less occupied that role through pupillage. But the inns still do offer a great source of community, through their facilities such as libraries and, well, not libraries so much, but you know what I mean. Libraries and more importantly, their dining halls where people get together to eat and drink, have a, have a good chat, have a laugh. So it's very collegiate from that respect. And although times have changed, what's most important for you guys is that they are a great source of finance to fund your bar training course. Little top tip before we begin, don't join an inn until you've secured a scholarship because remember, once you join, you remember for life, there's no do-overs. You can't change your mind down the line. It's like Harry Potter and the hat. Once you're Gryffindor, you are Gryffindor for life. So think about it. Keep all your options on the table. Outside of inn scholarships, there are also institution scholarships like the University of Law, BPP, and they are just as good in terms of the finance that they can provide, so make sure you apply to both. Some basic information on the scholarships themselves. So first off is that the actual value of the scholarship is twofold. It goes without saying, the first is the financial support, but more importantly is the fact that getting a scholarship from one of the inns is a seal of approval by them that you are competent to do the job. The scholarships themselves are split into major and minor scholarships. Again, it kind of goes without saying the major scholarships are more prestigious, but whichever you win, it's a great achievement and it's very much going to be a big aid on your pupillage application. Finally, the scholarships themselves, the majority of them, bar maybe a few at the top, are based on, they're awarded based on merit, which means they're awarded based on your experiences, your grades, your competencies. Uh, and once you actually secure a scholarship, then they are means tested. So there's two parts. They're awarded on merit, should you secure it based on merit, then the actual value, the actual amount of money you're gonna receive is means tested, which basically means that depending on your financial circumstances, you'll get X. If money is no problem to you, then you'll probably, you'll still get the award, but you'll get a lot less than someone who actually needs the money, which when you come to think of it is very fair. Let me cut right through this and get to the nub of it. The two most important pieces of information you need to know are how many scholarships are each in offering and what are the value of those scholarships. And once you know that, for me anyway, once I deep dived into the research and found those numbers, they dictated, they didn't contribute, they dictated my decision. You're in luck because you don't have to do any of that research. Legal Cheek recently put up an article and from my memory, the article basically said something along the lines of this. The collective pool of money that all the inns have together comes to around 5.8 million. Taking them in by in, 
Gray's in it has around 1.3 million to give. Middle Temple has around 1.3 million to give. Inner Temple has 1.7 million to give. And Lincoln's has around 1.5. Taking that even further, in terms of greys, they normally have around 80 scholarships between the range of, I think it's five or 3,000 and 20,000. Lincoln's, from when I applied, I remember it being between 10 and 20, 10 and 25. Obviously the Mansfield is like 25, that's the, that's the top one. But the rest of them are in between 10 and 20. I don't know what the numbers are for middle, unfortunately, nor do I know what the numbers are for inner however what i do want to say is you can simply contact your individual in and ask them how many scholarships do you have available and what is the range of those scholarships once you have all that information then you can go about making the decision as to where you're going to apply and what i'm going to do is i'm going to share my story with you because i think there's some real value in there that you can take in terms of the strategy things you should be considering when you're gonna to come to apply. So for me, I applied to Middle Temple, I ate a rejection and I took some time out, I looked at the application, I reflected, okay, why did I not get it? And the God's honest truth was, I didn't have any experience. You know, I made the decision at master's level that I wanted to do the bar. You're competing against people who have known from the first year who have all this experience to show. So I took a year out, I went and got the experience and then before I decided to reapply, I looked at the numbers and I saw that Lincoln's were offering more money per scholarship. And for me, I was all in because I was either gonna get it and it was gonna pay for the course or it wasn't. A 5,000 pound scholarship wasn't gonna be of aid to me because I didn't have the other 10, 15 to actually get over the line. So where I'm going with this, in terms of when I made the decision to apply to Lincoln's Inn, that was one of the elements, but more importantly, it was a shift in my thinking Initially, I applied to Middle Temple because they're all guaranteed an interview. Like in a temple, they guarantee you an interview. And I thought that would come to my advantage because once I got to the interview, I'd be able to shine at interview and hopefully get over the line and get the scholarship. Obviously, it didn't play out like that. But when I came to reapply, I realized that you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. And my circumstances are different than everyone else. That wasn't to say I had the best application in the world after a year out, but I had enough experience and I knew on paper, my application was good enough to get me to interview. So I didn't need the benefit of the guaranteed interview. I, I decided to focus on Grays or Lincolns because they didn't guarantee an interview, which meant there's a sifting process. So rather than thinking, okay, I'm gonna be guaranteed an interview, my thinking now was, or wait, I'm competing against a lesser pool of people if I get to interview stage. And that was the case, and that ultimately contributed to winning me my scholarship. Let's talk about the actual scholarship application itself. And I hope you are all aware that next Friday, I think it's November the 5th, 2021, is the deadline. So put that date in your calendar. Before you write a word on that application, go on to the INS website and look at each INS criteria for how they're gonna assess those applications. For example, I think Lincoln's Inn is broken down to five competencies that they're looking for, which are something along the lines of your intellectual ability, your interpersonal skills, your integrity, your ability to articulate ideas, and then your motivation slash commitment to the bar. The final thing to say on applications is this, draft the application through the eyes of a barrister. And what do I mean by that? It's simple. The person marking it is looking to see, does this person on paper have what it takes, the skills it needs to be a barrister? So you're trying to elicit those skills on paper. Now, that doesn't mean you need to have done all these minis or all this mooting. It simply means that you need to know what are the skills of a barrister and you need to show them. And I recommend doing the P method for that. That's P-E-E, -E, which is point, evidence, explain. If you follow that structure, you can't go wrong. Every point you make on the application, you provide evidence for it, and then you explain exactly what it's showing or what the skill it demonstrates. Also, this kind of goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If you're looking at the application through the eyes of a barrister, then make no mistake, they will spot spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes. 
really easily. They'll stick out like a sore thumb. So with that in mind, make sure you triple, quadruple, whatever you have to do, you check that application to death before you send it off. On the interview day itself, let's talk about attire to begin with, right? So normally you're expected, if you're a guy, it's a navy suit, black shoes, black socks, dark colors basically. Equally for girls, it's the same thing. You know, I think it's something like a, a dark sweater or blouse and a long skirt slash dress, dark shoes, heels, whatever. That all aside, I didn't get that memo. When I applied, I actually went to Marks and Spencer's the day before, got a nice new gray suit with brown shoes. And I went in and fortunately I was successful, which goes to show that whilst appearance is important, they're really looking for the meat and potatoes. Prior to the actual interview, I was emailed a list of possible questions that the panel might ask. And I actually do still have those questions. If you want them, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to email them to you. Uh, they'll give you a rough idea, vague idea of what might come up on the day. But then on the actual day of the interview, before going in, I was told you're gonna have to do a presentation on something. And I hadn't actually prepared anything. So literally I made a on the spot decision that I was gonna talk about my LLM dissertation. And thankfully that went well. Each in has a different interviewing process. So when I did the interview with Middle, I think it was 15 minutes and it was like a panel of five. It was, it was actually quite intimidating. You sat on the end of the table, there's people all up and down the table. And yeah, it was just like, it was more of a, it felt like more of an inspection as opposed to a conversation. Whereas at Lincoln's, it, there was three panel members and it was more, they, they were very friendly. Uh, and it was just more of a conversation. They were just looking to see if you had the skills that they were looking for. The interview day itself, for me anyway, was ghastly. I remember I arrived where we were doing the interview somewhere in Manchester, and we're all cooped up in this waiting room. There's like 40, 50 of us all just reading our notes. Honestly, it was like a panic attack in a room about to go off. Everyone was jittery, no one was looking at each other. I was just thinking, why are we all lumped in like this? It's awful. Just one in after the next, after the next, next, next. But you got you gotta you gotta build yourself up in here because it doesn't matter how many people are in the room, this is you against yourself. So that was that's what I told myself before I go in. You just block everyone out. You're gonna be there, it's you versus you. It doesn't matter about anyone else. And that's the mentality I took going in. Make sure you know your application like the back of your hand in there because you will be questioned on every aspect of it. And even if they don't go through everything, they'll focus on weaknesses that have presented themselves in your application. So you need to take an honest look at the application before you go in and say, what are the weaknesses on my application? What have I not accounted for? And what might they bring up? One thing that stuck out to me on the actual interview day, it was just how off piece it went from my application. Like they were asking questions on one area, mixing it in with another area. So if you go in thinking you're just gonna recite a script, then you're in for a bad day. Go in, know your application and be very flexible. Don't swing from the hip. Think about everything that you say and make logical and coherent points. Remember, you are applying to be a barrister. And what do barristers do? They go to court and they advocate for someone's case. They advocate for their client's best interests. So with that in mind, expect that you're gonna be challenged in there. You don't wanna just be agreeable. You don't just wanna to conform to things that they might be saying. If they challenge you, they're looking to see you challenge them back. They're not looking for you to argue with them, but they're looking, if you have a logical point and reason to argue a point, then argue it. Don't hesitate, don't be worried about what they're gonna think because you might be intimidated by the presence of the panel. That's what they're looking to see. The one time you don't wanna do that is if you have no basis for that point. If you're not sure, you're unclear, it's a silly point. If you make a silly point in there, you can come back from it. You can just say, sorry about that. Do you mind just giving me a second moment to think about that? And they'll be okay with it. Rather than carrying on the point and them thinking, what a silly point. The last thing I wanna say is this. If, unfortunately, you don't win a scholarship, honestly, it's really not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. Just attending the interview is great experience. It was for me, and you'll take it in next year if you decide to apply again, 
and you know it will be very beneficial you'll appreciate the nuances of the interview more so see it as a positive positive. and the final thing I want to say more importantly is this you don't need a scholarship to get pupillage. There are plenty of barristers out there who have successful practices without securing one. So don't let it demotivate you on your quest to securing pupillage. We got there in the end. Guys, thank you. I really do hope you enjoyed that video and I would appreciate it if you'd let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help me out. And other than that, guys, you know what it is. I'll see you at the next one.